Hello, um, good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Chuku Emeka, and um, in the, the lesson today is going to be on the real name of the God of the Bible. Today we are going to be giving you the real name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's interesting that most people who are Christians uh, don't really know the name of the God they worship. I was a Christian for over 30 years. I never really got to know the name of the God I worshipped. Some people call him Jehovah, some people call him El Shaddai, some people call him Yahweh, some people call him Adonai. All these things are not his name. In this video, we will be, we will be giving you his real name. And with that, let me give present kind of a disclaimer here. This video brings out the real name of the God of the Hebrew. By continuing to watch this video, you are agreeing to the terms that you will not make mockery or make fun of the name of the God of the Hebrews. If you intend to make mockery of the name of the God we are going to be presenting to you in this video, please stop watching now and go do something else. However, if you continue, that sin will, and the punishment of it will be on you and your descendants forever. We are providing, providing this information for education purposes to give to our people to understand and know the God that they should be worshipping. This should not be a material for someone to make fun of the name of the God of Abraham. Please, if you plan to do that, please stop watching and go watch something else. By continuing, you are agreeing to the terms that you will not use the name of the Most High in vain. Okay. So, um, like I said, um, it's been three years since I had this revelation of the real name of the Most High and um, not wanting to have a lot of internet presence, I have not put it out there. But, you know, I actually did some research. I was hoping that someone would have, would have the information out there. There are some people I saw that call God something that is very similar to what we have here, to the information we're going to be presenting. But from the, the basis from which they call the, they call the name of God, is very very flawed so we'll be presenting the real name of the god of the bible hidden in plain sight right here to you uh, most people when they want to figure out the name of god they go through the strong concordance and other interpretation all those are nice however you don't need the strong concordance to know the name of god in fact as you can see here i do have strong concordance at home I don't really use it. In this presentation, I'll be showing you the name of God of Abraham right here in the Bible. That name has been hidden in plain sight in the Bible all along. It's been hidden in plain sight. In this presentation, I'll be showing you that name of the Most High God right here, and you'll see it for yourself. So, okay, let's start. Yeah, like I said, the, the, the presentation is going to be on the true name of God. And like I said, it's been hidden in plain sight. The outline for the presentation is going to be this. I'll present, I'll give you, I'll give an, a brief introduction on why we need to know the name of God. And then I'll present you the name of the Most High in the Bible. And then I'll give you a proof of the name of God, the proof of this, what I'm saying. I'll give you the proof there in the Bible. And then I'll explain to you how it has been changed or how it was hidden, both in the ancient times, in later times, and in the present day how it's still being hidden. Then I'll also give you the name of Christ, the one people call Jesus. I'll give you his true Hebrew name in this presentation. Okay, as an introduction, why do we need to know the name of the Most High God? Why do we need to know the name? I don't know if you've heard this story, but when I was a Christian, I was told that the Jewish people, of course, the normal lie that Christians are told is that the Jew Jewish people are the real Hebrews. And I was told that the Jewish people were too scared to mention the name of God. They held it so much in reverence that it was a crime to even mention the name of God. And as, and as such, over time, they forgot the name of God. And the only thing that they remembered was YHWH, which they now abbreviated to Yahweh, 
and Jehovah and all those stuff. I don't know if you've been told that same story. Uh, perhaps you, you've heard the same story because that was what was circulating among the Christian sect. And I was a Catholic then. It was very popular. I hope you know that that's a big lie. Brothers and sisters, I hope you know that that is a very big lie. You see, all over the Bible, the Bible encourages us to call on the name of the God of the Bible. So if the Jewish people say that it's a crime to even call on God's name, that they were so scared to mention it and the name got lost, they are lying. Of course they are lying. Because all over the Bible, the Most High encourages us to call on His name. Abraham called on the name of the God of heaven, for, and he said, This, you are my God for salvation. Moses asked him, his, when the Most High appeared to Moses, Moses asked him, What name do I take to my people? And the Most High gave his name right there. That is the name we'll be revealing to you today. The Most High gave his name to Moses. Right there. And this will are telling us, no, they will forgotten it. The only thing we remember is YHWH. What nonsense is that? Why will anyone believe that? You've all heard about the story of Jabez in First Chronicle. Jabez was from the tribe of Judah. He called on the God of Abraham and called and said, please enlarge my coast. And the Most High granted him what he wished. Solomon, of course, I use the asterisk here, Solomon. His real name is not Solomon. I'll be telling you his real name. His real name, of course, is Jedidiah. But uh, Solomon is an occultic name. Maybe in a future date, I'll give the pre a presentation of that. But Solomon prayed that God should answer the prayer. In Second Chronicles chapter 6, he prayed that God should answer the prayer of his people when they call on his name in the temple that he built. All over the Bible, there are endless, endless quotation where the Bible encourages us to call on the name of the Most High. For instance, these are some Bible snippets I've, I've copied here. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the Most High said, He appeared to Solomon and said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12, the Bible said, Then you will call upon me, and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 33, verse 3, sorry, the Most High said, Call to me, and I will answer you. In First Chronicles chapter 16, the same thing is said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 24, it says, Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. This was Elijah and the prophets of Baal when he was calling on the name of the Most High, and he answered by fire. Let's go to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. It says, For then I will give to the people purified lips, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord to serve him shoulder to shoulder. In Psalm 116 verse 17, he said, To you I shall offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. In verse 13, it says that in, of that same psalm, he said, I shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. That's what David was saying. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 25, it talks about the sons of men started calling on the name of God. I'm sorry, sorry, not that was Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. The sons of men started calling on the name of God. In Genesis 26, verse 25, Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. Then he pitched his tent. And there his servants dug a well. In Psalm 105, verse 1, it says, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. 
Why will anyone who has looked at the Bible believe the lie that the Jewish people were scared to call on the name of God and they lost the name? Why would anyone believe that? Because it's a huge lie. The Bible is washed with so many verses where the Most High encouraged us to call His name. And He has just given a fraction of it here. Please go and read Joel chapter 2 verse 32. I've mentioned Genesis chapter 4 verse 26. If you look at Romans, I don't like mentioning the New Testament, but it's even in the New Testament. Romans 10 verse 13, Acts 2 verse 21, 2 Kings 5, 11, and Isaiah 12, 14. These are just a fraction. You can equally read a, a look at Psalm 68, verse 4. These are just a fraction of where the, the Bible is filled with verses that encourages us to call on the name of God. You see, these people brought in the name of their God they know that if we come together, we the Hebrews, the people that are called by the name of the Most High, if we come together and call on the name of our God, He is bound by His word right here to answer. They know that. They know that if we come and call on the name of our God, He will answer us. The word of the Lord does not go back to Him without fulfilling its mission. The Most High is bound by His words here in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that He will answer us and He will heal our land. These people know this. So what do they do? They change the name. And like I said, there are three stages in which the name was changed. And I'll be showing that in the presentation today. So if you have this notion that the, the, the people of the Lord forgot the name of the Lord and then they remembered YHWH and that could be Jehovah or Yahuwah or Yahushawa. That is total nonsense. Jehovah and Yahuwah is a name of a God. But that God is not the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So if you are going to church and you are calling on Jehovah or Yahweh, which means basically the same thing, if you are calling on that name, please know that you are not calling on the name of the God of the Bible. Just bear that in mind. Please be informed. Okay. What then is the real name of God according to the Bible? That's a very good question. If you are asking what's the real name of God, it's a very good question to ask. You know what? Thousands of years ago, Someone already asked God that question. And God gave an answer. You see, if you meet me and you want to know my name, there are so many ways you can do. You can either, I don't know, ask someone who knows me. Or you ask me directly. And thousands of years ago, Moses asked the Most High, please, what is your name? Let's go to the Bible, in the book of Exodus chapter 3. In verse 13, it says, Moses, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel. And like I mentioned, we don't use the word Israel. And after this presentation, you will understand why. And whenever you see it in the Bible, just don't even mention it. Okay? So, where, when you see the, the children of Israel, I just put Hebrews there. That's what it should be. So let me continue. It says, um, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of the Hebrews, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? First of all, Moses did not know the name of the God of his fathers. Don't forget, as at that time, the Hebrews have been in has been in Egypt for over 218 years. The Most High had made, his, made up his mind to come and save them from the land of Egypt, where they were living peacefully, and then they were later enslaved, and their labor was hard and tough. So, as at that time, they had forgotten the name of the God of their fathers. 
Moses knew that his people would want to know what is the name of that God. There may be some people who remember. If you read the book of Chronicles, you realize that people like Ephraim did not die in Egypt. Yes, Ephraim, the son of uh, Joseph, the son of Jacob, did not die in Egypt. He left Egypt with them. So there may be people as old as Ephraim that will remember the name of God and they will want to ask Moses, what is his name? So Moses needs to know the name he will tell his people. Do you understand that? Okay. Now, what did God answer? Let's go to verse 14 of that same Exodus chapter 3. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of the Hebrews, I am, I am has sent me unto you. Here the Most High gave his name, I am that I am. That's his full name. If you want to call it in short, he also gave the indication that you can call it in short, I am. You know, when I was a Christian, I was told that this is a title. Who gave God that title? Who did that chieftaincy title ceremony and gave God this title? Are you saying that the Most High will lie to Moses? Is that what you're saying? If you think that this is not his name, that this is a title, are you saying that he sent Moses on a journey to liberate his people and he couldn't even tell him his name? I, I don't know what I was doing, but I came across one Jewish rabbi writing that the Mosai just answered Moses this to get him off his back by just telling him, I am who I am. I'm sorry, I don't know the kind of God they worship, the Jewish people worship, but Moses did not worship the kind of God that was sending him a message and just want him to get, up, get, get him off his back. It was the Most High who appeared to Moses. Moses is not good looking for him. So why would he want to get Moses off his back? Brothers and sisters, you should be able to filter out the lies you've been told. Now, we've seen the name of the Most High from Him, directly from Him. He said His name is I Am That I Am. That is the English language version of that name. In the Hebrew tongue, that name is called Aya Asha Aya. In terms of spelling, you can spell it A I A H. A-S-H-A-R-A-I-A-H or some people spell it A-I-Y-A-H asha Aya, just like this it depends on how you want to spell but that is the name of the Most High in Hebrew the Most High also indicated that his, his name can be shortened to just I am in English and that in Hebrew tongue means Aya A-I-A-H. That, my friends, my brothers and sisters, that is the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the name of the God that will be praised and blessed forever. Selah. That should be the name of the God you worship. If you are worshipping any other God, well, you are not worshipping the God of the Bible. You may have your own reasons for worshipping Baal or Jehovah or anyone else. But if you really want to worship the God of the Bible, this is the name you should call him. Aya Asha Aya. Now, let us go to the proof. Let me show you the proof that this was the name that the Hebrews in the Bible called their God. Okay. We've given you the, the sacred name of the Most High from the Bible, from his own lips. Now, let us give you the proof of that from the Bible itself. You see that the name Aya Asha Aya, which in English means I am that I am, is the true name of the Most High and it has been in the Bible. Let us give you the proof of that from the Hebrews. We, we know that the Hebrews mostly named their children after their God. 
That is one fact. In fact, if you look at the meaning of most Hebrew names, you see that it has to do with God. The name of God is embedded in their names. Okay? Now, if you look at most Hebrew names, the word Aya is what follows most of the names. I'll give you an example here. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 25, of course, Samuel is not the real Hebrew name. We will see that later. When Solomon was born, the Most High sent the prophet Nathan to give him a name. When Solomon was born, he was named Solomon. But the Most High sent the prophet Nathan to give him the name Jedidiah. Do you see that ayah right there? That was the name that the Most High himself gave Solomon. And the Bible said the, the prophet gave him that name on account of the Lord. The name of the Lord was right there. Do you think when he was king that people were calling him Solomon? Of course not. They were calling him Jedidiah. The Most High cannot give a name and then David will now overturn it and give another name. When he was king of the Hebrews, he was being called Jedidiah. That is the name the Most High gave him. And again, you see that Aya right there. Brothers and sisters, if you open your Bible, I want you to open to the table of contents of your Bible. Okay, you don't have to. I already have the snippets of the table of contents of the Bible, what they call the Old Testament. I don't call it the Old Testament. I, don't, I call it the Bible. Now, if you look at the names in the Bible, there are more prophets that have the name Aya in their name than there are, there are those who have El in their name. Take, for instance, the, the, the prophets that have Aya in their name. We have Nehemiah. We have Isaiah. We have Jeremiah. We have Obadiah. Zephaniah, Zechariah, and of course Malachi, Malachi is actually Malachi, and then Mika is actually Micaiah. You can take a look at any of those ones. The ones, the, the, the ones that have L in their name are very few. In fact, there are just about four or five of them. Now, what is the difference between the, the prophets that have L and prophets that have Aya? If you look at the Bible, brothers and sisters, please pay attention. If you look at the Bible, the prophets that have L in their name are those who were taken to captivity in Babylon or Assyria. While the ones who were not taken to captivity have Aya in their name. Do you see now? Do you see the difference now? The, the ones who remained in Jerusalem have Aya, the name of the God of the Hebrews, in their names. While the ones who went on captivity have El in their names. Let me give you a very good example of that. Look at the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah was around when the Babylonians invaded he was around then. The Babylonians did not take him captive because he was too weak. He, you know, I'm, I can guess he's a very lanky guy. So they looked at him and this guy cannot walk for us. So they left him behind. He wasn't the only one left behind. There were other Hebrews as well. And the Babylonians made a governor for them to govern them and left. The prophet Ezekiel was taken to captivity. He wrote it right there that the Most High actually appeared to him in the waters of the Chaldeans. That's Babylonia. Okay? The, look at both of their names. We have Jeremiah still having Aya in his name while Ezekiel, that is supposed to be Ezekiah. The real Hebrew name of Ezekiel is actually Ezekiah. 
But because he was writing from captivity, that name Aya was changed to El. Okay, brothers and sisters, we've gone, we've taken a step further. We have this list here which we made, and in this list you will see very popular names that you have that has that ends with L. And we've gone to the Bible to pick out the real Hebrew names or their equivalents of real Hebrew names that ends with Aya for you to see. Let me go through this table so that you see it and understand it properly. It is important that you understand it. It's very important because the name of the Most High is right there. We just have not been paying enough attention. So please, it's important that you understand this. Okay? For instance, the popular name that we all know called Nathaniel, right? You see the L right there? In the Bible, you can see that name in First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 14. However, the real Hebrew name of Nathaniel is actually Nathaniah. And you can see that in 2 Kings 25-25. The name Ezekiel, like I mentioned from the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, that is not his real Hebrew name. His real Hebrew name is Hezekiah. Right? Of course, you can, you, we already know about the king Hezekiah in Isaiah chapter 38. Now, if you look at the, this name Hezekiah and the name Ezekiel, they mean exactly the same thing. If you look, in fact, if you look at all the names here on this line, including Nathaniah and all these ones, and then you compare them with all these names here that ends with L, they all mean the same thing. The only difference is these ones here are reference to the God of the Hebrews, Aya, while these other ones here are reference to the God of the Babylonians, the God of the Canaanites. L. For instance, in First Chronicles chapter seven, verse twenty-three, you see the name Jeremiah. The real Hebrew name of that is Jeremiah. All over the Bible, you see, especially in the book of Daniel, you see the, the name Michael or Mikael. The real Hebrew version of that is Micaiah. And that name Micaiah can be found in 2 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 3, or chapter 17, verse 7. It's most, of, most times that name is shortened to Mika or Micah. And it means, it means who is like Aya, who is like God. In the book of Enoch, we see the name Uriel, the angel Uriel. Of course, that not, that's not his name. The real Hebrew name of that uh, equivalent of that name Uriel is actually Uriah, Uriah, and you can see that name Uriah in First Chronicles chapter eleven verse forty one. You can also see it in the book of uh, Samuel. He is the is the name of the man whom David killed and took his wife Bathsheba. That's Uriah. That is the real Hebrew name. So for for. For those of you who are saying that, oh, we are Israelites, we are Israelites, you are Israel. Please understand the implication of what you're saying. You are Israel. How can you be? You are obviously worshipping El and you don't know it. The real Hebrew equivalent of that name, Israel, is actually Israel. And the name Israel, you can see it in First Chronicles chapter seven, verse three. The angel Rapha Aya is actually the, the, in the all over the Bible. You see the one Rapha Al or Rapha El. You see it in First Chronicles chapter twenty-six, verse seven. However, the real Hebrew equivalent is actually Rapha Aya. That is the name of the angel of the Most High, Rapha. Aya, and that can be found in First Chronicles chapter three, verse twenty-one. You see, in the book of Chronicles, the Hebrews sat down and wrote their names by their family. 
Most Christians don't read that. I was a Christian for over 30 years. I never read it, that book, Chronicles. Most times, it's very boring to some people when they see the book of Chronicles. They are like, oh, you know, so many names and so, you know, sounding very off. They just throw it away. The question I want you to ask yourself is this. Why will the Most High inspire someone to write those names down? The answer is very simple, brothers and sisters. Because the Most High knows that sometime in the future, we will use that writing to figure out his real name. And that's what we are doing now. So, next time you call yourself an Israelite, 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 ask yourself, are you worshipping El? If you are not worshipping El, then why are you calling yourself an Israelite or Israel? Because your name is supposed to be Israelia. That is the name of the God of the Hebrews. And it's, we didn't just pluck this name off from midway, midstream. It's right there in the Bible in 1 Chronicles 7 verse 3. There are also other examples. Please go through this table. Again, we, the members of the Igbo people in Nigeria, the Igbos in southeastern Nigeria, we have identified that we are the real Hebrews and we are bringing you this. We are going to put this table in our website. Please feel free to download it. Please feel free to circulate it. Enlighten people. We are not here for any monetary gain. Please don't make fun of the name of the God of the Hebrews, but use it to educate your family. When you are reading the Bible and you see Israel, don't mention the name. Just mention Israel. Just keep going because our Bible has been changed. Of course, they left the name Israel right there and they also left Israel and they, they will expect you to figure it out because the devil is an accuser. He will accuse you on the last day. Why didn't you figure it out? Brothers and sisters, this is it. All over the Bible, we see the name Ishmael, the son of Abraham. Why will Abraham name his son after El, the god of the Canaanites? Why will he do that? That's because he did not. The real name is Ishmaeliah. And that name can be found in 1 Chronicles 27, verse 19. The name Shemuel, which is the same thing as Samuel, right? Shemuel or Samuel is actually Shemaiah. And that name Shemaiah can be found in 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 14. That is the same name that they call Shem, the son of Noah. There are so many other examples right here. The, the, we have Mahalalel here, which is in Genesis chapter 5, verse 17. Actually, the real Hebrew version of it is Mahalalaya. In the same Genesis chapter 28, verse 9, you will see it. And look at the name here in First Chronicles chapter 27, verse 2. You get a name called Zabdiel. Zabdiel, right? But actually, the real Hebrew version of it can be found in First Chronicles chapter 27, verse 7. And it is called Zabadiah. It's the same name. That was changed in the New Testament to Zebedee. You remember the children, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of Thunder, James and John? This is their father's name, Zebediah. Of course, we've heard of the, the, the fallen angel Azazel in the book of Enoch. The real Hebrew version of it is Azaziah, and that can be found in 1 Chronicles 27, verse 20. Brothers and sisters, if you want to know the real name of the God of the Hebrews, please take your time to go through the book of First Chronicles. We already know that Hebrews bear name their children after the God of the Hebrews. So don't listen to these things that people are telling you, Jehovah, Rapha, all of that. No. It's right there in the Bible. It's been hidden in plain sight. Please make a printout of this and circulate it to anybody. Okay? Direct the people. Of our, it would be nice if you direct the people to our video so that they will get the real meat 
of the presentation, the real, the total presentation that we're giving you here. It would be nice if you do that. But feel free to circulate it to people. Let them know the name of our God and let them stop calling on El. Let them call on Aya, Asha, Aya. It is right there in the Bible the whole time. Look at Elijah. Look at Elijah here, which is Eli Aya, right? They have a name called Eli El in First Chronicle 5, verse 24. So that is the proof from the Bible that the name Aya, Asha Aya, is the name of the Most High. I've seen some people who call God Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya. Well, man, those are that some. Um, I would say they are very similar. It depends on the dialect you're trying to pronounce. But you can't go and call the name Jeremiah, right? You can't. It has to be Jeremiah. So Aya is actually the name. But the, of course, that's also acceptable if you call God Ahaya. Ahaya, Asha. That it's, it's basically the same thing. But I want you to understand the basis from which that became the name of God. And not just because Zondavan Bible Dictionary said so, or because um, 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 strong concordance said so. No. I want you to understand that you don't need the Zondavan Dictionary Bible, Bible Dictionary, or the Strong's Concordance to figure out the name of God. It is right there in your Bible the whole time. And it is Aya Asha Aya. Okay. Um, since we've given you the name of the Most High, and we're giving you proof of that from the Bible. Now, the question is, how was it changed? How, how did it did God come, it came to be called so many other things in the Bible. From our research, we've noticed that there are three ways that the name of the Most High was changed. Okay? In ancient times, for instance, the first one was this, in ancient times, they replaced the name of God from Aya to El. And that was basically done by the Babylonians. Once you go to captivity, they change your name. In fact, let us see that. Let us, brothers and sisters, let me show you that. Let us, let us not just talk about it. The Babylonians are well known for changing names of their slaves. If you read the book of Daniel, which shouldn't be Daniel, it should be Daniah, right? Now, if you read the book of Daniah, verse four, chapter 4, verse 8, Right? It says, finally, Daniah came into my presence and I told him the dream. He is called Belteshazzar after the name of my God, and the Spirit of the Holy God is in him. This was Nebuchadnezzar saying that he changed Daniah's name to Belteshazzar. That's not what the Babylonians do. And now if, if you also read even much earlier when they arrived as slaves, right, in Babylon. In, in Daniah chapter 1 verse 6 it says now among these were the children of Judah Daniah, Hananiah, Mishaiah and Azariah unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names for he gave unto Daniah the name of Belteshazzar and unto Hananiah of Shadrach and to Mishaiah of Meshech and to Azariah of Abednego Daniel chapter 1 verse 6. Daniah, I'm sorry. Daniah chapter 1 verse 6 made it very clear that they changed their names in captivity. Brothers and sisters, do you know how sad it is today that people bear the name Shadrach? They have forgotten that the real, pers the real name of the person that they call Shadrach is actually Hananiah. People bear the name Abednego. They have forgotten that his real name was Azariah. Now let me give you another example of how the Babylonians 
change the name of our people to the names of their gods. Let me give you another very good example here. Let us read the book of Matthew, right? Matthew chapter 1. And again, like I mentioned, I don't. when I discuss the faith, I rarely look at the New Testament with people. But this Matthew chapter 1 is very important here. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 1. Let me just read. <coughs> uh, the, the, it talks about the book of the generation of Christ. Please, I'm not going to mention the name Jesus. It is not his real name. And part of the presentation, I'll give you his real name. So whenever I see Jesus, I'll just mention Christ. Okay? Bear with me until I give you the real name. The book of the generation of Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begets Isaac, and Isaac begets Jacob. And Jacob begets Judah and his brethren. I'm sorry, this Judas or Judah, actually when you see S in a name, it's actually the Greeks that changed the names and put S in them. Instead of ending words with H, the Greeks usually end it with S. And you see a lot, a lot of examples of that. That is mostly found in the New Testament, in what they call the Septuagint version of the Bible. It's, a, it's the Greeks, the children of Chitim, that changed that from H to S. Okay? So, and Judah beget Pharez and Zara of Thamar, and Pharez beget Ezrom, and Ezrom beget Aram, and Aram beget Aminadab, Aminadab beget Nason, Nason beget Salmon. Please, I know that mentioning these names may be boring to some people. Please just bear with me. Let me go. As Matthew has written it, he has taken the time to write it. Let's take the time to read it together. And Salmon beget Boaz of Rachel, and Boaz beget Obed of Ruth, and Obed beget Yese, and Yese beget David the king, and David the king beget Solomon. Of course, Jedidiah of had had been the wife of Uriah. See, that's S again. And so, and Jedidiah beget Rehoboam, and Rehoboam beget Abia, and Abia beget Asa, and Asa beget Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat beget Joram, and Joram beget Uzziah, and Uzziah beget Joatam, and Joatam beget Achaz, and Achaz beget Ezekiah, and Ezekiah beget Manasseh, and Manasseh beget Ammon, and Ammon beget Josiah. And Josiah beget Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Okay? When they got to Babylon, what happened? It says, verse 12, Matthew chapter 1, verse 12 says, And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias beget Salati El. Do you see that now? There are all these names here. There is no L in any of them. No L. Go and look at them. None of them has L in them. The moment they got to Babylon, the child was renamed to Salati L. And that's how L got into our names. Then Salati L began Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel began Abud and L everywhere. After Babylonia, you see the name L in our names. It was not there before. Go and look at Matthew chapter 1. You read it and you understand. The name El was not in our names before. It was the Babylonian captivity that led to this. You see that now? That's the number one way our names was changed in the Bible. That's the way, the, the first way the, the Babylonian captivity changed our names. Now, the second way they changed or they hid the name of our God was in later years, actually in the 1500s, when they introduced the letter J. Look, for instance, look at the, take a look at this video on YouTube. You see this uh, gentleman here? Um, his name is Dr. John Berkeley, right? He gives an introduction of how the letter G came to be. Okay? The letter G, I'm, I'm talking about the letter J here, not the sound. The letter J did not exist in the Hebrew or the Greek and even the English language. 
it was not there until the 1500s when it was introduced to the English language. It's still not there in other European languages like Spanish and Portuguese and the rest of them. Before that, the letter J was a variant of the letter I. It's very important. Please try to understand this, okay? I'll try to explain it as much as I can. The letter G was used before then to represent the sound I, not the letter. And that was what Mr. Berkeley here did not point out based on his explanation and everything. The letter J used to be a variant of the letter I. However, it used to represent the sound, not the letter. The, sound, the letter I has always been there. But the sound I, A I Y, was represented before with the letter J. Why the sound J, as we know it now, used to be represented by the letters D and Z? Please go and look at English phonetics. If you study English phonetics, these things are still the same. The I sound, A-I-Y sound, is represented by the letter J in English phonetics till this very day. Most times, it is the I-Y sound. The A is omitted. The I-Y sound is represented by the letter J in English phonetics. Open your dictionary. Most dictionaries have phonetics in them. You will see there why the sound J, as we know it, is still represented by the letters D and Z. That's what it used to be. Okay? Now, this representation of J is common in Scandinavian languages, in the Old English and in Spanish. Right? For instance, the name, the name James, for instance, right? And in English, you call it James, but pro try to pronounce it in Spanish, right? It will be Iames. That J used to be I, so it is Iames. That's what it is. Then in in sometimes they pronounce, they, of course, depending on the dialect, they pronounce it Ames, but this is the Spanish pronunciation of the name. James. I think it's the same thing with Portuguese. Do you see how the letter J evolved to mean something totally different in English, but not in other languages? In Scandinavian languages, or, or, I don't know, Polish, um, um, Belgium, French, even French, the letter J still retained that original flavor to represent I, A-I-Y sound, or I Y sound. It still has it. It's kind of a deeper version of I, of, of the letter I. It still has it in these languages. But in English, they have changed this. This name used to be I am S. They've changed it to James. They don't even sound similar anymore. But they are the same thing. Imagine how the name I am S changed to James, totally different. So bear that in mind, this is what was introduced to the letter J in the 1500, all right? This is how the letter, the sound of the letter J was changed from I to DZ. But it did not change in the English phonetics. You can still see it till today, okay? Now, in Psalm 68, verse 4, King David gave the name of God as J-A-H. Okay? Now, because of that, most people pronounce it as Jah. Oh, I can't mention the millions of people that call God Jah. That's good enough. They're quoting it from the Bible. However, they are reading a 14th century letter or even pre-14th century letter with the 21st century pronunciation. They should be aware that this J has been changed. It has been mutated. Right? If they know, if you know that this letter J 
when at the time the English was translated, the Bible was translated to English, the letter G used to represent the sound A I Y. If you put that here, the name of God as given in Psalm 68, verse 4, will change from Ja to Aya. Brothers and sisters, do you see that now? The same Aya has been the name of God ever since. And it has been there in the Bible ever since. It's just the, what they did in later years, like I said, the second thing they did after they found that their, their, their L was not working was to change the letter J. If you understand how the letter J has changed from I, A-I-Y, and you bring it back to how the Bible was translated before this change happened, you find that the name Ja should be the name Aya, the same name. I give you earlier of the Most High Himself. I am. Okay. So, like I said, this name has been hidden in plain sight. It's right there all along. You just need to understand what has happened to the pronunciation. From what I've seen, the Geneva Bible, I've seen a version of the Geneva Bible that retains this idea. In Psalm 68, verse 4, it's actually uh, uh, if you pronounce what was written there, it's pronounced, it's, it sounds Aya and not Ja. That's the only Bible I've seen. Again, there are people who swear by the King James Bible. I am one of them. I, I, I think the King James Bible over time has been the most consistent. But, brothers and sisters, every Bible out there has been changed. You just need to understand. So the, you see snippets of truth in this one, snippets of truth in the other one. Every Bible out there has been changed, including the King James. So the Geneva Bible kind of retains this. I usually go through, so I don't go through all those new generation Bible, new King James, new English translation. I don't look at all those nonsense. Okay? But I'll recommend, the Geneva Bible does have this. It, it, it doesn't mean that I'll take it over the King James, but... It's worth to note that it does some earlier versions. I don't know if the current ones still have it. But some earlier versions of the Geneva Bible retain the name of our God as Aya and not Ja. And you can say that every other Bible has it because if you look at J there, you pronounce it Ja. But if you understand that this J used to be A-I-Y, then the name is very simple, Aya. Okay, so um, the next one here, the, how they replace, uh, how they hide or change the name of our God. The third one here is total outright displacement. They just totally replace the name of our God with Jehovah and Yahweh. Okay, now in most Bible today, they just replace it with Jehovah and Yahweh, and this is why I like the King James Bible. If you look at the King James Bible, those names. Are written in capital letters. What that means is that they are not in the original translation. The, the source of the name Jehovah is, you remember what I told you earlier, that the lie that we were, we were all told that the people of God forgot the name of God and the only thing they remembered was YHWH. It's like if your father's name is, I don't know, if your father's name is Stanley and you say you forgot his name, the only thing you remember is the letters. S W Q. It doesn't make any sense at all. However, if you do some research based on what I have seen, this Y H W H is actually an occultic construct that means earth, fire, water, and wind. Something. It's an occultic name, and I don't really like looking at books that have occultic connotations. But I was really searching for the origin of these letters that they gave us and say it's in the sacred name of God. It's an occultic term. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is not an occultic book. It's a very plain book. Okay. We are not here for a certain reason. The Most High does this thing in plain sight. 
There's nothing hidden. Okay. Now, that name, uh, it was from this YHWH that they now, some people now put in all kinds of vowels in between the consonants. And some people came up with Jehovah or Yahuwah or Yahushawa. Some people came up with Yahweh and whatever. All those are names that were gotten from the gods of the Canaanites. Right now, millions of our people are going to church worshipping these two guys. It's important that they know that this is not the God their ancestors worshipped. These are gods. Jehovah is a God, actually. Yahweh is a God. Small letter G, God. Okay? But it's not the name of the God of the Hebrews. Most Christians also call, I mentioned here, if you go to some Christian churches like the Harvin, they call God all kinds of those names, like even Shekinah. I mean, you don't even need to look at The slightest research will show you that Shekinah is a goddess. It's not even a masculine god, it's a feminine goddess that the Jewish people worship. Okay, so that is, brothers and sisters, that is how they changed the name of our God. The third method here is outright displacement. They are so emboldened nowadays that they, in our Bible they totally kicked out the name of our God and replaced him with these guys. Completely. Just replaced him with these guys. Okay. Now, um, to sum up this presentation, I mentioned I was going to give the true name of Christ. The true name of Christ. First of all, he's called Jesus. Most people call him Jesus now. But let us look at the name Jesus. The name Jesus comes from the Greek called Jesus or Jesus. This, I think this is how the, Greek, the ancient Greek representation for son of. So this name Jesus means son of Zeus. It is from this word air here that you get the words like Hair to the throne, you know, H A I R, I think. Hair to a throne or something, which means son of the king or something like that. The, in ancient Greek, the word hair Zeus is what they used as son of Zeus, and that's what they call Jesus today. If you pronounce it in English, it sounds Jesus, it sounds very different, right? Try pronouncing it in Spanish or Portuguese. You get the name Jesus. It's clear. It, it hasn't changed much in Spanish. Jesus is right there. Okay. So, so those who worship Jesus are actually worshipping Zeus. Because the next thing they came up with is the ridiculous uh, doctrine of the Trinity. Right? By saying that the Father and the Son are one and the same. What that means is that if you are worshipping the Son of Zeus... You are also, and you believe that the Father and the Son are the same, you are actually worshipping Zeus. Simple trip. You just need to catch them in the act, like we just did. Okay? That's where the name Jesus comes from. Okay? However, now let's look at the real name of Christ. The real Hebrew name of Christ. In the book of 2nd Esdras, right, which is in the Apocrypha, the Most High informed Esdras that his son will come to the war. And the Most High specifically mentioned that his salvation will begin to be manifested among men. Okay? In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21, Mary was told by the angel Gabriel Ayah that she should name her son a name, a particular name. In the Bible, that name is written Jesus now, of course. In the early King James, they write it in capital letter to show that it was not part of the interpretation. Okay? I don't know if they still do that in the current King James. Anyway, but the angel told Mary, to, uh, the angel Gabriel Aya told Mary to name the child a name. And the, he gave a reason for that name. He said, for he will save his people. So, if you combine these two words, you find that whatever name that Christ has must have salvation or savior in it. Now, in Hebrew language, 
the word salvation or to save someone is called yasha or yasha right and if you want to make a name out of that the name the most likely name you make out of that is called salvation of god which means yasha aya you see that aya there again now yasha aya is a name that means salvation of god that is how that is the name of christ yasha aya salvation of god i've seen people on the internet who say that christ's name is yashaya it means one who saves ah no that's not what it means yashaya is the name of christ and it means salvation of god don't forget hebrews named their children after their god okay so this my brothers and sisters is the name of christ and some people call uh, Christ Yeshua or Yahushua or that. Man, man, come on. That's not what it means. I mean, I think Yeshua or Joshua, they are the same thing. It means wealth. It doesn't mean salvation. And the angel did not take down Mary, uh, name your, give your son this particular name because he's going to be a rich man. No. He said because he's going to save. So Christ's name has to have salvation or savior in it. And that is Yeshua. Okay, so brothers and sisters, uh, we thank the Most High for revealing His name to us and the name of His salvation to us. Um, we know that the Most High in His infinite mercy will send His Spirit to whoever is listening to this presentation to understand and to look at the evidence that has been presented and to judge it you know, with an open mind. May the Most High guide you as you do this. And please, when you do come to the realization that this is the right thing to do, please do not call God Jehovah or Yahweh or anything again. Simply call him I am that I am. Aya Asha Aya. Because that's his name. May the most high bless you for bless you and keep you. Selah.